Hello everyone, I'm Gay Yee Hill, and welcome to the Cosmic Lounge at JPL on Ustream. Once in a while, every time there is a timely story, we open up our studios and bring in some of our scientists to talk about the story and to answer some of your questions. So the topic today is YU55. It's an asteroid that is coming to coming to Earth, flying by about nine-tenths the distance of Earth and the Moon, and it's about four 400 meters in diameter, so quite large, about the size of an aircraft carrier. This is coming by on November the 8th, and it will be flying by the Earth, and astronomers and observers will be watching for it. To fill us in on it right now is the principal investigator, Lance Benner. Here's his story. 2005 YU-55 uh, is uh, going to make a very close approach to the Earth on the night of November 8th, uh, 2011. At that time, its distance from Earth will be just under nine-tenths of the Moon's distance away from us. It's going to be moving very rapidly as it traverses the sky near the Earth on November 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. In effect, it'll be moving straight at us from one direction and then it'll go whizzing by and straight away from us in the other direction. So it, it's, its motion across the sky will be close to 180 degrees over the course of less than two days. 2005 YU-55 cannot hit Earth, at least over the interval that we can compute the motion reliably, which extends for several hundred years. It made a close approach to Earth about 18 months ago. In April of 2010, colleagues of ours at Arecibo Observatory were able to observe this asteroid using the radar facility at Arecibo. And they were able to obtain radar images that showed that this object is about 400 meters across. On November 8th, 9th, 10th, we'll be observing it again. All right, with me now is Marina Brosovich. She is a co-investigator with Lance and also a member of the radar team. And Marina is going to fill us in on exactly how do they get this data and this information about an asteroid just like YU-55. So first of all, just to reiterate, a question that we are getting over and over in emails, on Twitter, and in chat, will this asteroid hit Earth. And we did hear it once before, but just to re reiterate. No, absolutely it is not going to hit us. We have very good idea about its orbit for the following hundred years, and there is no chance of impact. And we believe with these measurements, upcoming measurements at Arcebo and Goldstone, we believe that we are going to remove this threat even further, probably centuries. For many centuries, we'll know exactly where this object is going to be. What do we have here? Is that another PHA? Take a look at the Palamo. Hmm. My guess is that this body is an Aten. Do we have a size? Got to be in the 300 meter range. Let's go down this. You can think of the Near Earth Object Program Office as sort of a CSI unit. Uh, we, we discover these objects, we try and determine what they're made of, where they're going, and just how dangerous they might be. In December of 04, one of the new discoveries was an asteroid uh, that later became known as Apophis. It's an object about 270 meters long that's going to make an extremely close approach to the Earth on April 13th, Friday the 13th, 2029. This object isn't a source for concern now, but back then it had us worried. So this is a representation of the Earth and the orbit of the Moon and the uncertainty region of Apophis. All of the points on this line um, are possible locations for Apophis. And any one of these dots could be the actual asteroid. All of the numbers that we were seeing were well beyond what we had seen before, and the threat level as a result was elevated. The impact probability for a collision with the Earth in 2029 reached the 3% level, three chances out of 100 that it would hit. When we saw the impact probability rising, we put out calls for um, others to look on their, in their archives for images of this asteroid at previous dates. When we got additional observations from the optical telescopes and when we got additional radar data, the threat level went to zero in 2029 the poster child for near-Earth objects. It's the one that's always mentioned because it's going to get very close to the Earth in, on April 13th, Friday the 13th, uh, <laughs> 2029. So uh, 
uh, an asteroid that's headed our way and come closer? No, no. We, we understand its orbit very well. Uh, we understand what bodies are nearby and are gravitationally nudging it. So we take all of that into account as we uh, integrate its motion forward in time. So there's no chance of any object, uh, unseen object, uh, getting in its way and perturbing its course. Uh, so it's, it's completely safe. There's okay. no chance of an impact. I think we have an email question from Z Epsilon, I believe, is, is the the handle, what gravitational factors or other could probably alter its repetitive trajectories enough to become a serious threat to either the moon or the Earth? Ah, well, that's a good question. Uh, as this object goes around the sun, of course, it's perturbed when it gets nearby uh, a planet, uh, Mars or Earth or the moon, uh, and it does uh, nudge its uh, orbit just a bit, changes it. so. As we go forward in time or backwards in time, uh, these gravitational nudges by nearby bodies do affect its orbit. And once we have the radar data in hand that Marina talked about, uh, we'll be able to project its motion forward for several decades and see whether there's any interesting close Earth approaches. So through its lifetime, it, they can alter and change a bit? Oh, yeah, very much so. But not dramatically? And uh, for the future, we could mine them. They have uh, precious metals, uh, platinum group elements. Uh, some of them have water resources in the form of hydrated minerals. So when we get out in the inner solar system and build habitats, uh, we're not going to build them on the ground and launch them into space. We're going to go up there and look around for raw materials. So they're important for our future. And then, of course, uh, if we find one with our name on it, uh, we're going to have to track it and deflect it if we are to have a future. So. We have a couple of images and videos. I mean, a lot of people don't realize how common asteroids and meteors and, you know, yeah. are uh, all around us. And there's a couple of images we have from Peekskill yep. um, that we can actually show um, that here is a, an event. Oh, yeah. This was uh, October 9th, 1992. Friday night, and a lot of people were out with their video cameras filming uh, high school football. And that was a, a Volkswagen-sized object that came into the Earth's atmosphere and, and broke up into 70 or so different pieces. And one of the pieces, about the size of a football, there it is, landed in Michelle Knapp's 1980 Chevy Malibu. <laughs> the insurance company said, forget it. We're not paying really? for it. It was an act of God. Michelle turned around and <laughs> sold the car and the meteorite for $69,000. So <laughs> The only car ever to be hit by a meteor. Well, it's, it's one of the only ones that uh, got hit this badly, certainly. With the, the culprit right there. Yeah, yeah, that's a good-sized uh, meteorite. Right. Can an asteroid ever orbit Earth instead of hitting it or just like a, a small moon? So can an asteroid... I guess it would be be captured into orbit, yeah. just like the moon. It could happen. Uh, there are no asteroids in Earth orbit at the moment. Uh, occasionally, one comes by close enough and slowly enough, so when the Earth is going around the sun, it is temporarily captured around the Earth, but uh, not permanently. Uh, in order to have a permanent capture, you'd have to have what we call a three third-body interaction. It would have to come by the moon or Mars and be... Uh, it's an orbit adjusted just so that it would be in a very Earth-like orbit and then be captured uh, as it very slowly drifted past the Earth. So it's very tough to do, not impossible, uh, and occasionally an asteroid does get into a temporary Earth orbit. So what about Trojan asteroids? Trojan asteroids, uh, and there is one Earth Trojan, uh, actually uh, lead or follow the Earth around uh, the sun. So they're, uh, they're not actually in orbit around the Earth or in orbit around the sun, but they're in an, an orbit identical to that of the Earth or nearly identical to that of the Earth uh, so that it keeps pace with the Earth uh, either ahead of it or behind it. And the, the Trojans are named after the Jupiter Trojans, and there's a cloud. Asteroid heading towards, if there is an asteroid heading towards Earth, is there anything we can do about it? Oh, sure. Uh, if we find it early enough uh, and we know its orbit well enough, which is some of the goals that NASA has, is to find them early, find them early, and find them early. Uh, those are the three important goals. Uh, then uh, it's 
it's and the and the most likely impactor would be a small one because there are a lot more small ones than there are large ones. So one of the most effective and robust techniques for deflecting an asteroid are simply to run into it with a spacecraft, as we did with the deep impact spacecraft back in uh, 2005 with Comet Temple 1. So we have the technology. We've demonstrated the technology that uh, we can actually run into an asteroid with a spacecraft, slow it down just enough so that in 10 or 20 years when it was predicted to hit the Earth, it wouldn't. So sending a spacecraft out not to just visit it, but actually give it a little bit of a nudge. Give it a nudge. All and right. if that doesn't work, give it another nudge. <laughs> okay. Well, Don, always a pleasure. And the big event happens on November the 8th. Mm -hmm. YU-55 is going to fly by very, pretty close. Not quite the, the a little closer than where our moon orbits, mm -hmm. about nine-tenths the difference, distance, and it's a 400-meter yep. asteroid, so that's about the size of an aircraft carrier, so nothing too tiny. Um, so people will be able to see it. Uh, that night, if you have a telescope, I'm told you said at least, what, a six-inch telescope. Yeah, Marina said uh, six inches, which is right, uh, or larger. And uh, you can get the coordinates that you need, either uh, Sky and Telescope or even our own uh, Horizon site here at JPL. Uh, it's uh, ssd.jpl.nasa.gov. One more time. SSD, okay. Solar System Dynamics, dot JPL, dot NASA, dot gov. All right. So you can look it up. You can see it yourself November 8th, the night of November 8th. You can actually get the coordinates so you can spot this asteroid going by and it'd be pretty fast? Well, it's going to be moving uh, just under nine degrees per hour. So it'll, if you see it in your telescope, you'll see it move. Okay. But it's not going to zip across the sky. All right. Mm -hmm. So it should be an exciting night. Yeah. All right, Don, thanks for joining us and thank you for joining us for this Ustream chat on YU55. And we hope...